from Lupita Nyong'o's bravura double performance in Us to John Travolta overacting in the worst way in The Fanatic. Here's a look back at the highest highs and lowest lows of 2019 in movie acting. In Us, Lupita Nyong'o makes the most of a rare opportunity to put two totally different performances in the same film. While playing Adelaide, Nyong'o is anxious and twitchy, with her emotions building throughout the film as she tries to protect her family. While playing Adelaide's counterpart, Red, Nyong'o is full of grace and danger, with such an unsettling presence that you almost want to flinch when she appears on screen. Together, Nyong'o plays the full spectrum of emotions between two identical characters that never once leaves the viewer confused about who's who. It's an absolutely unshakable pair of performances that carry the film and only become more impressive on a rewatch. The shadow hated the girl so much, but so long. Jessica Chastain seemed like a perfect fit to play the otherworldly alien Vuck as she tries to bring Jean Grey over to the dark side in Dark Phoenix. Unfortunately, while the third act climax and script can be blamed on behind-the-scenes drama, that doesn't excuse how boring her performance in the film is. As Vuck, Chastain should be strange and seductive, an alluring contrast to the men in Jean's life that are trying to control her. Instead, Chastain just seems bored, delivering dialogue as if she's reading the script for the first time. What remains of my people searched the stars for that power to control it, but it destroyed everything it ever came into contact with. Until you. In Midsommar, Florence Pugh plays Danny as reserved, introverted, and shell-shocked following her family's sudden death in the opening scene of the film. Those feelings only intensify once she gets a last-minute guilt invite to her boyfriend's vacation to a pagan festival that involves psychedelic drugs and ritualistic killing. A lesser talent might have played Danny's grief and probable PTSD like a boiling kettle that slowly explodes. Instead, Pew shows a more naturalistic depiction of grief. She's looking for comfort from her no-good boyfriend and trying to stay on top of her emotions while taking shrooms, when her grief finally explodes out of her in a ritual of shared pain and screaming, it takes your breath away. If John Travolta's starring role in 2018's mega-flop Gotti wasn't bad enough, he delivered another stinker in 2019's The Fanatic. The film follows an autistic man named Moose who becomes obsessed with a horror film actor. That obsession soon curdles into an obsessive hate, which leads to Moose stalking and threatening his favorite star. Even if you could get past the offensive stereotypes that Travolta uses as shorthand to communicate that Moose isn't neurotypical, the actor just can't handle playing a character that needs to be both sympathetic and sociopathic at different points in the film. Maybe Travolta just needs one good film to get back on top, but The Fanatic definitely isn't it. And a truck would squish it, and the blood would splatter everywhere, and everyone would watch it! Like Blade Runner, another science fiction film with a powerfully ambiguous lead performance and a burdensome voiceover attached to the theatrical version, Ad Astra feels like a film destined to become a cult classic in the decades to come. While the film has a dense script and some impressive visual set pieces, the core of Ad Astra depends on Brad Pitt giving one of the most nuanced performances of his career. As Roy McBride, Pitt is the son in search of his father. Not just in a metaphorical way, either. He's literally tasked by Spacecom to head out to Neptune to search for his dad in order to stop a series of power surges that threatens the entire solar system. Pitt shines in the role, delivering every ounce of nuance and backstory with only a few clenches of the jaw or a faraway look. M. Night Shyamalan's early superhero film Unbreakable ends on an ambiguous note that seemed like it would never be resolved. That is, until Bruce Willis's David Dunn made a cameo at the end of 2017's Split, revealing that the two films took place in the same universe. That sets up 2019's Glass, a film that seemed to promise the long-awaited sequel to Unbreakable. The good news for fans is that it came out. The bad news is that the film itself is largely terrible, squandering the promise of Unbreakable's final moments. Glass has plenty wrong with it, but Willis's poor performance would rank high on the list. In Unbreakable, Willis played Dunn with a quiet melancholy in a reserved, almost deadpan performance. It's a fine line to tread as an actor, and in Glass, Willis misses the mark entirely. What was once an internal, carefully calibrated sadness has become a boredom so obvious that Willis was barely mentioned in the reviews of the film, despite playing one of the most prominent roles. 
Over the course of five seasons, Aaron Paul's eternally hard luck addict Jesse Pinkman was basically the moral center of Breaking Bad. Even in a show beloved for incredible performances, Paul's acting throughout was a standout. That's partly why it was so mystifying that he didn't become a major star after the show's end. Besides leading roles in 2014's Need for Speed and the prestige television show The Path, Paul's largely stuck to cameos, small roles, or voice acting work. El Camino, the film's sequel epilogue to Breaking Bad, shows exactly what Hollywood's been missing and reminding everyone how beautifully Paul can inhabit a role. His performance against acting heavyweights like Jonathan Banks, Brian Cranston, and Robert Forster make it clear that Paul is one of the best actors around. Have you been watching the news? I have, very much so. So you hear what they've been saying about me. Even the best actors can have misfires, and Matthew McConaughey is no exception. Case in point, the bizarre misfire Serenity, which ranks near the bottom of the actor's career output. McConaughey is no stranger to turning stereotypical characters into fully fleshed out people, but that same instinct seems to have worked against Serenity. Considering the laughably silly plot twist, it might have been better for McConaughey to play the role with his tongue slightly in cheek rather than commit on the level of his time on True Detective. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite movies and TV shows are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.